Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ. In uh, the previous video, uh, we described all of the equipment required to set up a basic uh, portable packet radio station. And in this video, we're going to show you how to find the software that's required to use Outpost Packet Message Manager and how to install it and, uh, and some basic configuration just to get it communicating with the TNC. So Outpost is a program that's available online on the web and the easiest way to find it, I could give you the website address, but the easiest way to find it is in any search or engine, do a search for Outpost PMM. And usually the first thing in the list that it will return is the main uh, web page for Outpost Packet Message Manager. Here it is here. So we'll go to that page. Now there's, there's an awful lot of information here. There are training videos and tutorials and all sorts of things. We'll just scroll back up to the top. We're just interested in showing you how to download and install the program. So we're going to go right to Downloads and it will take you to this section. The first item in the list is going to be the main program uh, that you want, Outpost Packet Message Manager. So if we click on that, it's going to begin the download, which in my version of Windows, Windows 7, is happening down here. Uh, when that completes, we're going to run this uh, install application. Okay, we're going to run this install application. And for the most part, we just need to accept the default settings. There might be one exception. Uh, now, I should mention that uh, I already had Outpost installed on this computer. I had to uninstall it in order to do this demonstration. So there's going to be a couple of differences. But through all of this, we're just going to accept all of the default settings. Uh, now, this is one that you won't get if you've never had Outpost installed. This is saying... Uh, some of the configuration files already exist, uh, which is fine. Now when you get to this page, select the components, skip the sample scripts. You can install everything else, uh, but I would skip the sample scripts. Uh, scripts are special instructions that uh, set outposts to do multiple things at one time, and the sample scripts uh, will it, you could accidentally cause Outpost to change your call sign uh, to a call sign in the example and do some things that you don't want it to do. So I would I would skip at this point installing the sample scripts. Later on, if you get more experience, that may be something we'll train on using scripts, but uh, for the time being, skip that. But install everything else except the sample scripts. And again, just continue to accept the default uh, locations for everything. Uh, in this window, it's going to ask you if you want to install desktop icons. And uh, I would go ahead and do that. There's going to be five different icons that it will install. Uh, for the most part, we're only going to be using two. But we'll, we'll install those on the desktop, and then we'll move those into a folder, an individual folder for Outpost, uh, where we will keep those. Uh, so we're all set. We'll go through the install, and it's a fairly quick operation. Uh, let's see, this is another one that says one of the configuration files already exists. You're probably not going to get that window. Uh, when you uninstall Outpost, it doesn't delete your configuration files. That's why I'm getting these. And there, there's going to be a series of them here. And basically yours will just go through the install without, without doing all of that. Okay, when you're all done, you click Finish. It will open up a text file that will give you some information about Outpost and about the current version and some other information. We won't bother to review that now. Uh, when you do yours, you may want to take a look at that. Now, we're going to go to the desktop. These Polar Bear shortcut keys or icons are the ones that pertain to Outpost. Now, this current version of Outpost, I noticed, has a bug in it, and it on this particular shortcut key, IP Serial, it doesn't have the Polar Bear icon, but IP Serial is an Outpost application. There's two of them we're going to be using primarily. This one, Outpost Packet Message Manager, is the main program. We'll also use IP Serial from time to time to train on Outpost. 
Uh, so we want to put these all in a in a single folder. Now I have a folder here that uh, I previously created called Outpost PMM for Packet Message Manager and it already has the shortcut keys for those in it. Basically I just created a folder on the desktop and I drug all of these into that location. Uh, so we'll see if now that Outpost has been reinstalled if this will still open the application which I believe it will. It actually opened it in the in another monitor uh, that I had. I am going to delete all the messages. This also saved all of the messages that I had in the previous version, so we're going to delete all those as if we have a clean install. Now, when you install Outpost, it will probably start up with this identification window. This section will be blank this section will be blank but you need to enter your call sign in the user call sign area you can put your name there uh, message ID prefix it may self uh, self complete that window if it doesn't you can leave it blank that's no problem mainly you want to put your call sign in and your name and that's sufficient for the time being don't worry about this tactical area down here that will be explained later so that's all installed. Now we want to see if we are communicating with our TNC. You do that from the tools menu. Go to the tools menu, down to interactive packet, and we're going to open up a dumb terminal called serial slash comport. When we open that, we're going to click connect. And in my case, my TNC is turned on and it's just monitoring activity on the channel. So when I clicked connect, it started displaying some packets that were received after Outpost was opened. Yours may not do that. It may not display anything there. But if you, let me clear all this off. I'm going to do a control A to select all of that uh, data on the screen and hit the delete key just to delete it and clear it off. If you push the enter key and you get this CMD colon, that's known as the command prompt, if you're getting that, then you have a good connection to out to your TNC. If you connected everything as described in the video about equipment, uh, if you get, if you've got that command prompt, uh, that's all you need to do on this video, and you're you can uh, actually skip the rest of the video. If you're not getting that command prompt, we need to uh, figure out why and correct that. So for right now, I'm going to reset my terminal to the default settings as if it was a brand new uh, I'm going to reset my TNC to all the default settings. Uh, you do that from the restore command. Uh, don't worry about this uh, learning all this or making notes on this. I just want to restore the defaults. Now if when you connect to your terminal if you're getting this where it displays gibberish and then every so often it displays press star to set baud rate. Um, that's a good thing. We're communicating with the TNC. We just need to set the baud rate of the TNC to agree with the baud rate in your terminal program. So the way you do that is by pressing entering a star when you can actually read the message. Don't do it while it's displaying the gibberish. It's cycling through other baud rates. The star is an uppercase number 8, so I'm going to press shift and get ready to hit the 8 the next time it displays the press star. Should be coming up any time. There, so if I press the star key, then it's going to stop and it's going to say enter your call sign. So we'll enter our call sign. It'll give you the startup message and we're all set. Now, it could also be that that isn't happening. I'm going to select all this again and if you press enter and nothing happens and you're not displaying anything after you press connect. Uh, let me turn the monitor off so we're not getting this information. Okay. Now if you're pressing enter and you're not getting anything after you press connect up here. Then you need to make sure you have the correct COM port selected. Okay, if we go up to the file menu 
and go to the COM port settings, most of the time if you're connected to a laptop, there's only going to be one COM port. So uh, you don't really have any options to choose other than the single COM port that you have installed in your laptop. If your laptop isn't installed with a COM port, you'll be using a USB to COM port converter and you need to figure out where what COM port number that is. Even if you're only if even if you only have one, it might not be COM port one, it might be COM port five. So we need to go to control panel. And actually we need to wind up at device manager. So if you in the search window, you may be able to click on device manager. Let me try that again. D-E-V-I-C-E, -E. and then if you see Device Manager appear in this list, that's really what you need. So we'll click on that. We'll wait till it fills this in. In Device Manager, there'll be a setting down here or something on the list that says Ports, parentheses, COM, and LPT. If we expand that, it will show us what COM ports are installed on your computer. If you have a COM port, actually installed a hardware installation of a COM port, it will just say communications port and it will give you the port number. There may be one and in some computers there may be more than one if you have more than one actual physical COM port on your computer. If you're using a USB to COM port converter it's going to be listed like this USB serial port COM3. This particular one is a Silicone Labs it actually gives you the manufacturer USB to UART bridge COM4. So you need to f need to try to figure out which one of those are the correct one. And if you if you have more than one, chances are you're only going to have one. Just get the COM port number and make note of it and we'll configure it with that COM port number. If you have more than one, you can make note of the ones you have and you see they're they're not all in order. There's COM1, COM4 and then COM3. There is no COM2. So you can't depend on them being in any particular order. Just make note of the ones you have and then we'll go back up here and in the COM port settings from the pick list you're going to select all of them that you have one at a time until you get some response from the terminal. So you'll either get some response like the command prompt or you'll get gibberish displayed on the screen. Uh, now I have to restore our defaults again. And I don't think I can do that for new user mode. Let's see if we're in, yeah, we're a new user. Don't worry about these commands. It's not important to know these right now. Okay, so you, you may, if it's a brand new TNC, uh, they come with this, uh, uh, baud rate selector setting right when they're new out of the box. Once you set this you won't get that again unless you restore the defaults and it erases all the settings in your TNC and takes you back to uh, uh, how it was set up when it was shipped brand new from the factory. Uh, so you'll either get the the command prompt once you select the correct uh, COM port or you may get some gibberish like this Another thing you might want to check are the COM port settings and make sure that the baud rate, 9600 baud, and the data bits, this is, this is typically how, how they're set up at 9600 baud with eight data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. Uh, if you want to make sure that agrees with your settings in your TNC, those are the settings in the program and they need to agree with the settings in your TNC. So let's go back to uh, device manager here for a minute and we're going to again expand COM ports and we're going to look at the properties here in COM1 and look at the port settings. See what the port settings are on that COM port and you'll know what to set the COM port settings on your terminal program back here in IP serial. 9600 baud, 8, none, and 1. Okay, we're good to go there. And of course we're already communicating here so we know that's correct. But if yours isn't, 
you'll want to check in Device Manager, see what the COM port settings are, and then make those make those settings agree here. And if you get gibberish displayed on the screen and don't get this message, press uh, star to set baud rate. And you, let's just say you get something that just looks like this stuff over here on the right hand of half of the screen. Just nonsense. You may want to go in and start adjusting that COM port setting up and down until you do get a sign-on message when you turn the TNC off and on. Uh, the startup message, rather. So I'm going to press the star key again when I get the correct message here. There it is. Press star, enter your call sign. You'll get the startup message. Then if you turn the TNC off and back on, you'll continue to get that startup message. So another thing you can do is if the baud rate that's set in the TNC is not agreeing with the baud rate and communications parameters in your terminal program, you'll just have to go in and pick other baud rates higher and lower than the current setting. Keep turning the TNC off and on. If you know you have the correct COM port set, turn the TNC off and on, and when you see anything displayed, even if it's gibberish, then you know go in and adjust the baud rate up and down uh, from the current setting until you actually get the correct sign-on message and then you'll you'll have all of the uh, uh, settings made correctly to begin to start communicating with your uh, with your TNC. So that completes this presentation hopefully you'll be able to get to that point uh, once you get to that point, continue on with the next video and we'll actually begin to start using Outpost uh, to do some communicating. We'll get some of the basics down and I'll keep adding higher level instructions and more sophisticated uh, settings and use of Outpost in, uh, in the subsequent videos. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or are running into some problems, uh, feel free to email me. My email address is k8bz at arrl.net. Email me, let me know what problems you're having, and uh, we'll get them straightened out one way or another, either via email, telephone call, or if we have to, we'll install some Telnet software on your computer, and I'll Telnet right into your computer uh, where I can see what's going on and actually set it up uh, for you to get it uh, functional. So thanks for watching. Uh, please pass this on, this information on to your uh, fellow ham radio operators and Racy's Aries uh, interested parties. And uh, hopefully we'll get uh, more people using Packet uh, to its full potential here in, uh, in Michigan's Homeland Security Region 3. Thank you.